how did we build the country which has the characteristics in terms of an aging population that we have? Population that we have. Well, you've got a couple of very old, significant pieces of federal legislation. The whole mortgage interest deduction portion of the Revenue Act from over 100 years ago, in combination with the National Housing Act of 1934, which included the federal, which established the Federal Housing Authority loans, plus what is commonly known as the GI Bill of Rights, part of the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, which added the Veterans Affairs insured loans, in combination with the, the, the interstate highway system, which was established by the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, put all of those significant pieces of federal legislation together, and what did we get? The obvious answer is we built a country full of auto-dependent, single-family, home, primary suburbs. Not surprising that the country we aspire to building. We built the American dream. We facilitated the American dream. And it made a lot of sense. And it took us through decades of growth and prosperity. And I would argue that much of those same pieces of significant legislation also apply to the urban area. By and large, it exactly predicted. This was the recipe that built the suburban America and the sprawling cities that we have. But what it also had, some of the less thought out or unintended consequences of which, <clears throat> it's full of, I, I've heard that the phrase Peter Pan housing attributed to several people. So I'm not going to attribute the phrase to somebody. I'm not that clever. I didn't come up with it. But it's full of these housing, the housing that we built and the suburbs that we built and the cities that we built was essentially built as if no one would ever grow old. So, and I, this slide is courtesy of some friends and colleagues at the Atlanta Regional Commission, and they're very playfully saying we built a society, we built spaces and places as if people were not growing old. Many of us probably have experience knowing people who've grown old in some of those houses. I can speak from my experience. My parents who benefited from all of those pieces of legislation, built the house, lived the house, raised the family in the suburbs. Parents get old, guess what? They can't handle the house. The house doesn't work. Sprawling single-family homes in auto-dependent suburbs is not the ideal answer for everyone as our needs evolve. It may work for some. It certainly doesn't work for all. So what do we need to do? Where do we go from here? Real simply, here's the demographic snapshot. About now, and Cook County is pretty consistent with it, about one in eight Americans is 65 or older. And there are lots of numbers out there dealing with different age levels. Anyway, it's inescapable. One in eight currently, one in five within the next 20 years. No matter where you go, no matter what age, no matter what geography, you're going to get something similar to that. The group which used to be this is becoming this. And it's not just a temporary. This is not just the baby boomers getting older. This is the baby boomers followed by the Generation X, followed by the millennials, adding to it decreasing fertility rates, adding to it increasing lifespans. And these numbers, this is not a glitch in time. So with all of the ramifications, many of them, we're not going to talk about all of them today, Going to stay away from tax policy and fiscal policy, but the, dem the demography is undeniable and inescapable. 